Today, India became only the world's fourth country to successfully land a spacecraft on the moon and the first to do so near the moon's south pole. As interest in lunar and space exploration intensifies around the world, Canada is preparing to send its own moon rover and an astronaut to orbit the moon in the coming years. For more on Canada's plans in the space sector and its benefits, joining us now is David Haight, Director for Economic Analysis and International and Regulatory Affairs at the Canadian Space Agency. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jacqueline. So I imagine you were tuned in to uh, this landing today. W what does it mean for the you know, broader world of, of science and space exploration? I think it's an exciting day. I think it's an exciting uh, day for everyone. I think as we uh, as we venture deeper into uh, the solar system, as we go uh, past the International Space Station, as we go back to the moon, I think it, I think it's an exciting time uh, for everyone around the world, and and uh, and something that we that Canada uh, Canada's in the game. We're a player when it comes to this. Yeah, in particular, uh, with something similar, right? A, a moon rover is in the works for a couple of years from now. Um, how important is, is that going to be to have, uh, you know, Canada's own rover on the moon? Well, it's going to be exciting, uh, Jacqueline. Like to be honest, we've been we've been at this for uh, over a decade, so we have a lot of prototypes in terms of the rovers that we've designed uh, here in Canada. And uh, what we're looking at here is we're looking at a 30 kilogram uh, rover uh, that's going to be launched no earlier than 2026. That's going to uh, also uh, go to uh, near the south pole region of the moon with some uh, scientific uh, instruments. So in terms of looking for uh, water ice, uh, taking samples, looking at uh, the geology uh, of the moon as as uh, as we look uh, as we look further on and it, it'll be sturdy because uh, it gets really cold up there it goes down to minus 200 celsius very harsh climate harsh environment so the materials that need to be used uh, need to be uh, innovative lightweight products um, because uh, you don't uh, you can't send more than a certain amount of weight up there is there anything in particular that the Canadian rover will be seeking out that, that might be different than this one uh, from India that's there already? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, what we have is, is we have a, a suite in terms of the scientific team. So we have a, an international team, both uh, companies and, and from uh, universities, uh, that this is their life's work in terms of doing this research. So what we're looking at is analyzing the soil in terms of the regolith, um, taking samples uh, to see, uh, you know, for for evidence of, of water and ice, and and specifically what we're looking at is is as we look to go back to the moon and eventually land to the on the moon, what we're looking at is is if we can find water ice, then we can have uh, an energy source. We can break apart the hydrogen and the oxygen and uh, and and stay there for for some time in terms of habitation. Is that something that you know takes a long time to to find to figure out once you're actually there? What's what's the sort of timeline end up looking like? It's a good question. I mean, what what we know is you know we've looked at, at with synthetic aperture radar satellites. So that's another area of expertise that Canada has mm -hmm. in terms of looking at uh, the the geology. So we have some hints of where it might be but we need to get out the, up there to to get those samples to hmm. analyze to compare them and and that part of that is international collaboration international research and that's what makes space so exciting you know in canada we have over 40 universities across the country that are doing uh, space research so it's really a point of of national pride when it comes uh, to space. Um, it's on our $5 bill, as you know, Canada Arm 2. So it's something that, right. that Canadians are, are proud of and it's exciting. And, and it, it, we're, we're, pushing, we're pushing the envelope in terms of cutting edge technologies um, yeah. that are going to have benefits back on Earth. What are some of the you know, particular areas of strength that you see for the Canadian space sector in the you know, years ahead? You mentioned the Canada arm as being a, a major achievement. We also do a lot in the satellite business. But are, is there something or anything else that you think could end up being you know, particular strengths for Canada going forward? Yeah. No, that's a great question, Jacqueline. So, you know, we have... Canada Arm 1 was part of the shuttle program that started, you know, back in 86. We have Canada Arm 2 with Dexter, that's a small robot on the International Space Station, the mobile 
uh, CERT MSS and that does the repair and the maintenance for the ISS and actually help put it together in its infancy. Now we're looking towards Canada Arm 3. So that'll go around, uh, they'll be on the Lunar Gateway. Um, so the Lunar Gateway will be orbiting the moon and there will be Canada Arm 3, which will use cutting edge, you talked about earlier in your last segment, artificial intelligence, autonomy, um, because for large uh, portions of the year, it will be uh, uncrewed. So uh, Canada Arm 3 will be relied on not only to help put together Deep, deep Space Gateway, but to do routine uh, maintenance and to help uh, for spacewalks when there are crewed missions there.